So hi guys, um, oh, I'll just zoom out a bit. Oh, now you can see them now. Uh, <laughs> as you can tell, I am enjoying uh, Geek Week on YouTube. I'm actually thinking about doing something on my other channel, the one that's not based on trains. Um, and I might try and do something Doctor Who related. As you can tell, I do quite like Doctor Who. So anyway, I'm just going to try and get this in shot without you seeing the Doctor. Oh, you can just see the reflection there, but I'm guessing that doesn't matter. So this technically is my proper... <laughs> is my proper unboxing video. I've never actually done one where I've taken it out of the box it was shipped in. I did get this from eBay. Uh, it is second hand, but the uh, seller said that it was actually on display when... Um, <laughs> said it was actually on display when it was out of the box. So uh, I'm going to attempt to try and open it. This could take a while, so I might cut it short. Uh, oh. Or not. Oh, no, I see. A bit there. Sorry about all the rumply noises. There we go. And as you can tell, it's a gin too. Um, so it's still in the box now, so if I open it and it's just loads of little parts, you can see my reaction. So it's a 3F Ginty, 47410 BR Black, and it's in Lake Crest. So this feels like I'm, I'm opening something brand new that I've got straight from the shop. So hopefully that will reflect in, uh, in the model. So I'm going to try and take it off bit by bit. So... 3F Ginty card. You always get these with these later ones. And I mean I really do like these and I do but then again I do like seeing the model actually in the box, so like being able to see it. But I do like these cards. I know they put them on the back of modern boxes, but it's nice to have a little bit of a picture. So I kind of want it both ways. Yeah, there's never anything inside apart from this. Yeah. Yeah, that's just saying how uh, the Origins was in the Johnson 3F, which looked very similar. Uh, then Fowler started to build these again uh, with an improved locomotive 422 Jinties being built from 1924 until 1931. Uh, so many were required that the LMS, as did the MR, Employ subcontractors such as Vulcan, Bagnall, and Hunslet. Now Hunslet does diesels. Um, most of the diesel, should I, sorry, most of the diesels down at uh, Chasewater are Hunslet diesels, but they did do steam engines for a while. So uh, I'll try and get some more information. I think that should be enough information, but I'll try and get information about um, what was the number again? Uh, four seven four ten. So we'll just put the box and the card out of the way. Uh, guarantee. Oh, what's this? Railway Junction. Um, hmm. This looks like it's come from China. Well, this, the seller was in Britain, but it looks like it's come from China. It's been stamped. Oh, so someone's actually probably already sent this away and got it. Got a guarantee on it. So. Where was this? Oh, the Collectors Club. I'm already a part of it. Thank you. And then we. Ha I'm trying not to look right. I'm not looking at the, the train now. I want you to see the train with me. Anyway, so uh, parts list. Just the usual gum. We'll move all of that out the way. Oh, just just that looks beautiful. Right, is there a hole in the back of these? Oh, there is. Oh, there's a bit of dust on it. Um, what looks to be a cobweb. There are cobwebs on my Ginty. Honestly, look. 
If I turn it over and find a spider underneath, I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> I mean, it just it just needs a bit of a clean. Look at that. <laughs> I've actually never had <laughs> an engine with cobwebs on and I know some YouTubers do fake laughing when they see something like this but I'm actually quite amused by that. Um, oh, I've got my brush under there. Don't worry, I don't have makeup or anything. This is my sister's old makeup brush which I borrowed and I've never given back. You okay now, Mr. Ginty? I can't really say Mr. Ginty, considering all of us call trains she. Because it is a she. Anyway, there we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, so here it is. And, oh, what's this? Oh, these are the scissors. Sorry, I always end up looking at stuff through the camera, so... Here it is, and it is a stunning model. Right, from first glance, now, normally when YouTubers say, uh, when I've watched reviews of this and other YouTubers have said, oh, it's such a heavy engine, I can see where they're coming from. It is quite heavy compared to, say, other engines, but it's not the heaviest in the world. Well, let's see what that says then. Let's see what the uh, the shed code is. Can we focus? Let's just see if we can hold my hand still a bit more. It says I can't read it through the camera. Zoom out a bit. It says looks to be 87E. I'll look that up later, uh, so when we do the running video I'll add a load of facts about uh, this engine. And what I always love about Backman is, no matter what livery it is, they always do the crest and the livery really crisp. It does look really nice. But this engine is just stunning. I mean... I, I always change like, what my favourite train is, but actually looking into the Ginty more... I've actually kind of fallen in love with the engine. Because I've seen one at the Seven Valley Railway, and I saw one at the Great Central Railway, but both of them were parked up, so I've never actually seen a Ginty in motion I guess you could say um, and I think if I saw one in motion I'd probably just fall in love with it straight away but I am still very much a pannier tank kind of fan and a prairie tank fan you see I can never have one favourite I always end up having three but the let the, the numberings really crisp on it and you can see over there this is actually uh, I believe they call it the reverser, but that's just, it's kind of like a, a gear stick in a car. When that's actually locked in the middle position now, um, and then when you push it forwards, the train would, and then you apply some steam, so you move the regulator up a bit, and then it'll start going forwards. And you can actually see the regulator in there, that little stick that you can see next to the window, that's the regulator. Yeah, I'll get my light. Now, the reason I'm not prepared is literally because only just this second the post, uh, the postwoman has uh, come to the door and said, I've got a parcel for you, and I automatically knew what it was. So anyway, I don't know whether you'll be able to see any of the detail better. Let's 
you can see uh, cylinders, uh, not cylinders, sorry, uh, oh, I've completely forgotten the call. Um, injectors, sorry, there we go. Even though those aren't actually the injectors, I don't think, because there is actually a lever. This is this is my uh, experience on Rail Simulator. There's actually a a lever next to, not a lever. It's kind of like a a little thing that you pull. That's actually inside the cab. Uh, that's near the uh, reverser. And when you pull that, that's kind of the injector. So you can actually see the little thing that the reverser sits on. So that would be you'd pull the stick at the top. You'd clamp it together and then push it forwards Ooh, there you go focus please there is a lot of detail in there for such a little engine this is actually very handy this so back on the engine oh now you've got my blowing fingers all over it anyway all these separately fitted items, I mean, move that out of the way. Um, but all these separately fitted items, such as the safety valves and the whistle, Backman always do a great job with their steam locomotives. I can't praise them enough when they bring out models like this. I know that I think they've only just retooled, or it could be the same engine actually, uh, that they've released now. I believe they've released another one. Um, but Backman always impress, even if they put the same locomotive with some little changes, because uh, you can get these new now. Like the um, new SDJR uh, Gene 2, which is number 22, I believe. That SDJR livery is actually um, a made up livery, so when uh, that Gene 2 went into preservation, SDJ, the SDJR blue livery is, I guess you could say, a fantasy livery because it, it never was actually around in the 1960s or 1920s or whenever these engines were around. So, at least I don't think that's what I heard from. Uh, oh god, um, Jeff Wright. Oh damn. Uh, I'll put the name of the channel uh, just here. No, that's that's who I heard that the SDJR livery was a fancy one. But I also know that because in the Backman catalogue, it says that the SDJR livery is a, I think it's a nine, which means it's a modern day train. Uh, so yeah, but I mean, look at all this, all the piping along the side they've just really done a really really nice job on it there's only one thing that I can do now really isn't there and that is to run the Jinty sorry about these coaches on the inner line and then if I do zoom around you will see a freight train it's just I'm running my standard my customly weathered that I did myself uh, standard four and uh, my Jubilee Connaught which this one was actually um, customly painted and renamed and numbered by um, Simon uh, the, uh, who does British Railway Stories so anyway here's the engine that you want to see though well I'm hoping you want to see otherwise you wouldn't have clicked on this video anyway oh, right so this is probably the first time that it's run in a while, considering it had cobwebs on it. Um, at least it wasn't rusting. And that's actually something I forgot to say. It is... I don't know where the tanks are, but there is something... There is, I think it's probably the chassis that is die-cast. But when I was... Hmm, seems a bit wobbly. Uh, just check if all the wheels are on. There is, I think it is the chassis that's die cast because it is quite heavy for a little engine. So anyway, it's, it's in the right direction. Oh, out of focus. Come on, camera. You're not normally like this. Oh, there we go. 
Now this engine won't have run in a while, so I need to give it a bit more power. Oh. That's at 40 on my power rating on my controller. So it is quite fast. Um, I'll run it round at 50, I mean 40, that'll be its running in speed, because I don't think I'll be running it at 40 for a... That's probably going to be express speed, so 30 would probably be freight train on my kind of speed thing. Wow. It is very fast. I'm sorry that I keep whizzing this camera around, it's just... It is quite a fast engine. So there's the standard four. Uh, I'll just bring this camera down a bit. And that's it just darted fast. So I'll zoom a bit out a bit and then I'll just wait for it to come back round. Now I really should have done the... Uh, uh, oh god, not me falling over. <laughs> I really should have done uh, the running in before, but anyway, I'm going to pause it here, I'm going to find some information on it, and I will give some of those arty, farty angles that I normally do. Right, so I'm holding my camera at the minute, and uh, this is actually the point from my desk, that's my tripod there, and that's everything that's under my desk. In that box there, that Looney Tunes box is pretty much all the scenery that I will eventually put on. Anyway. So, I'll just wait for it to come around. Uh, anyway. So it's uh, a Class 3F, um, which stands for 3 Freight, which is its power rating on how much you can pull. Sorry if it's a bit shaky, it's just, it's on pretty much almost full zoom, so I'm every little movement so like massive uh, it was designed by Fowler it was built at the Vulcan uh, foundry in 1948 so that's just when uh, is it? I think that's just when British Rail started to group everything together so its first British Rail shed was 11A which is Carnforth can't, can't, yeah. Now it's last shed, it doesn't actually say. So I'm guessing, was it 87A that I said was on the front of that? On the front of, on its uh, smoke box door? I'll have a look once it's uh, stopped and um, I'll then Google that so you can uh, see uh, what its current shed would be. Um, it was withdrawn in 1966, so it was only two years off um, the last 15 guinea special you can hear it, you can hear the coupling rods clanking a bit that's quite cool, I, I like it when an engine does that um, disposal details it's I'm not going to try and pronounce that, I'll get it wrong uh, it doesn't actually say it's disposal so there's not a lot that's actually written about this engine so it's quite a mysterious engine um, and its disposal date was the 30th of the 4th, 1967. So that is... I'm really bad with months, sorry. April! Uh, April the 30th. That it was completely disposed of. So now I'm going to pause it again. And I'll try and find out what shed that it would be currently at. Right, I know I'm just kind of whizzing this train round and then just filming it from my desk and I know that's not the best thing to do uh, but it's 87E which I think the what it says on the front of the smoke box door that's what I think it says uh, 87E is Landor uh, that's what I got so if I just kind of try and keep the camera there as best as I can with one hand and not looking at it Um, Landor Shed still seems to be around because uh, on Google Maps I've just found it. Uh, 
and it's very near Swansea, so it's quite. Uh, it probably worked around docks or something. So it might be a dockyard engine. Anyway, I hope that that me just bringing that little bit of information makes this review a little bit more interesting for you. So I'll try and do some um, arty shots now. This video is probably going on for quite a while. Well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this rather long review, and I hope that all the information I gave you about this en engine interested you. Um, so, thanks for watching, uh, and thanks for everyone's continual support. I think I've reached 89 or 90 subscribers at the minute, which is great, considering I only started really around last year, and that's re I'm really, really happy that so many people like the content that I'm putting out because I've had so much fun actually filming all this I mean before I used to on my main channel Indiana Jones and Luther, I used to put out stuff that I enjoyed but I just kind of put out stuff whereas now I've found this hobby I've I've really started to relax a bit more because before when I used to put up videos I used to get stressed because I didn't know whether anyone would like them whereas now I'm just putting up videos because I generally enjoy this hobby and I know that other people might enjoy watching this so thanks for everyone who's enjoyed watching my videos and liked and commented and subscribed because it really does mean a lot so uh, thanks for all your support and uh, goodbye I thought I'd just add this afterwards now the engine's been running so this is kind of a strength test I guess I do it with most of my engines so here's a little Jinty uh, brake van three mineral wagons S what you can see It's so amazing that the bubble wrap that it was wrapped in has just fallen off my desk randomly. Anyway, so you're just going to see the standard fork come around with the Pullman. Uh, I am going to get a headboard for it that says Yorkshire Pullman that I can put on my trains. So here it comes. So this train is at 30 at the minute. The power, uh, the power on my controller. Let's move it round. Show you. Uh, the outer track is this one. Track one, and that's at 30. I think it should be at 30. The white dot's starting to fade off, but it is at 30. And then this one is at 50. That one's a bit more clear. So, yeah, I thought I'd just show you that. Uh, it's a very good runner, but I can see it's going to be one of those tank engines that doesn't go around first radius curve. I don't know, I haven't tried it around first, but my Pannier tank, which has a very similar chassis arrangement, so like the wheels are very similar in terms that the wheels are uh, the same distance apart, and that will not go around first radius curves. But as you can see, it is very smooth now that I've run it in. But I'm still, I'm still laughing at the fact that it did actually have cobwebs on it. Ne I've always bought, well, most of my engines have been second hand, so they've never actually, and they've never been in that condition before. Like, it was spotless, but it had cobwebs on, which I found quite funny. So anyway, thanks for watching again, and bye.